Step right into the eerie world of The Bride of Frankenstein, released in 1935. This classic horror film has it all suspense, thrills, and a touch of the macabre. But that's not all. Stick around because there are plenty of shocking, funny, and even heart-wrenching facts about this movie waiting to be uncovered. What qualities do you think make this movie a lasting symbol of the industry? Maybe it's the unforgettable characters, the timeless theme of creation gone awry, or the groundbreaking special effects that still captivate audiences today. When was the first time you watched this movie? Whether it was in a darkened theater or curled up on the couch at home, everyone has their own story of when they first encountered the horrors of The Bride of Frankenstein. Now we want to hear from you. What's your most special memory or personal experience related to this film? Share your stories and memories in the comments below. Don't be shy, we can't wait to hear from you. So, grab your popcorn and get ready for a journey into the world of monsters and mad scientists. The Bride of Frankenstein awaits. In 1935, in darkened theaters, audiences were spellbound as the silver screen lit up with a tale of terror and tragedy. The Bride of Frankenstein, a classic horror film directed by James Whale, emerged as a follow-up to the original Frankenstein movie. Set against a turbulent backdrop, the movie captivated viewers with its gripping story and revolutionary special effects. It delved deeper into Dr. Frankenstein's tale and his creation, exploring themes of loneliness, humanity, and the search for acceptance. After its release, The Bride of Frankenstein made a significant impact on popular culture. It solidified the Frankenstein story's place in entertainment, inspiring many adaptations across different mediums. Its influence is still felt in horror movies today, but beyond its cultural impact, The Bride of Frankenstein remains a timeless story of love and loss of the eerie and the misunderstood. It continues to engage audiences, inviting them into a world where monsters are more than just figures of fear, they reflect aspects of ourselves. Few films in cinematic history can thrill and chill like The Bride of Frankenstein. Its story lives on, a tribute to the enduring appeal of horror and the power of storytelling. James Whale, the director of the film, had a unique vision for his actors. He sought Colin Clive for a role in Journey's End, intrigued by the idea of casting someone with personal experience as an alcoholic. Boris Karloff, the iconic actor who portrayed the creature, had a modest farewell. His cremation took place just three days after his passing, attended by only four individuals at Guildford Crematorium in Surrey, UK. His ashes found a final resting place in the Garden of Remembrance there. Additionally, a photo of Karloff engaged in cricket with C. Aubrey Smith was displayed at Lord's Cricket Ground in 24, commemorating Sussex's first county championship win, as Smith had been a captain of the team. Una O'Connor, a familiar face in Hollywood during the 1930s to the 1950s, showcased her talent in several notable films, including the Oscar-winning Cavalcade. Her biography is documented in Axel Nissen's Actresses of a Certain Character. Boris Karloff, known for his portrayal in The Bride of Frankenstein, had a colorful personal life, having been married multiple times and earning a reputation as a serial adulterer. One of his marriages ended due to adultery allegations. Karloff's involvement with Marga Beaton, sister of a theater company owner he toured with, led to speculation of marriage. Following the 1931 original, Elizabeth was portrayed by brunette Valerie Hobson due to Mee Clark's illness. Edward Pale Esaru's last name often appeared misspelled in credits. Boris Karloff, whose mother was Indian, was once described as the most beautiful Indian woman by the British Consul of San Francisco. The movie picks up where its predecessor left off, though the change in Elizabeth's hair color might be noticeable. Karloff's contribution to the film is significant, despite the misspellings in the credits. In casting, Bridget Helm declined the dual role due to marriage, leaving Louise Brooks in consideration. The character Mrs. Shelley and the monster's mate were up for grabs. Mary Gordon, known for roles and adaptations of Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson, appeared in two versions. The movie's title refers to Henry Frankenstein, not the monster, who is often called the Frankenstein monster. These details offer insights into the movie's production and narrative choices. In a peculiar twist, Boris Karloff's distant cousin Quentin Crisp found himself in the cast of a remake released in 1985. John Carradine, whose profile is detailed in character actors in horror and science fiction films 1930-1960 by Lawrence Raw, added depth to the genre. Despite persistent myths, Karloff's life before Hollywood wasn't one of manual labor, but of luxury as revealed by historian Greg Nesteroff. Karloff's wealth from his Canadian salary and family support painted a different picture from the poor Karloff mythos he himself cultivated for studio publicity. 
His daughter confirmed this narrative, shedding light on the truth behind the misconceptions surrounding his early life in Hollywood. In one notable film, he appeared alongside Bezel Rathbone in several productions. These include The Garden of Allah, The Hound of the Baskervilles, Casanova's Big Night, The Court Jester, The Black Sleep, The Last Hurrah, and Hillbillies in a Haunted House. Another actor, Billy Barty, received recognition with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame for television on July 1, 1981. This honor was bestowed upon him at 6922 Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, California. Valerie Hobson joined the Screen Actors Guild in late 1935, marking a significant milestone in her career. These tidbits shed light on the diverse careers and accomplishments of the individuals involved in The Bride of Frankenstein, offering a glimpse into their broader contributions to the entertainment industry. Joan Woodbury started her film career when she was just six years old, and in 1935, she played the role of Nana Martinez in a Hope Along Cassidy Western. Elsa Lanchester, known for her cleverness, starred as the main character in The Bride of Frankenstein, even though she didn't get top billing. Dr. Pretorius, whose full name is Septimus Pretorius, represents his name's meaning Royal Seven, suggesting his connection to the seven deadly sins, reflecting his true nature. These individuals had a significant role in The Bride of Frankenstein, leaving their mark on the history of movies. Dwight Fry's portrayal of Renfield in a 1931 film inspired the original Alice Cooper group, leading them to create a song called The Ballad of Dwight Fry on their Love It to Death album in 1971. Boris Karloff, renowned for his role in The Bride of Frankenstein, was disappointed when denied the chance to reprise his stage role for a 1944 film adaptation of Arsenic and Old Lace. Upon learning that Anna Erskine, his fan mail secretary, was marrying Russell Krauss, one of the play's creators, Karloff expressed his displeasure by refusing to contribute to Krauss's support. Elsa Lanchester, standing at 5'4", was transformed into a towering seven-foot figure for her role in The Bride of Frankenstein. To achieve this, she wore stilts and had bandages wrapped so tightly around her that she couldn't move and had to be carried around the studio and fed through a straw. Following the 1935 movie The Bride of Frankenstein, some interesting tidbits emerge about the cast. John Carradine faced a brief jail stint in 1953 due to alimony payment issues. Boris Karloff, known for his iconic portrayal, resided in England from the mid-1950s until his passing. Notably, Elsa Lanchester spent three hours on her bride makeup, while Boris Karloff endured a five-hour process. These insights offer a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes dynamics of the classic horror film, shedding light on the experiences of its talented cast.